Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls on the Bright Side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We will get to your calls in our second segment. Today, we have a guest at the bottom of the hour. Dr. Ann uh, Borok is going to be talking about candida and multiple sclerosis. She has healed herself of multiple sclerosis. She's got a couple of books out on MS, as well as uh, candida and uh, a new book called The Candida Cure The Candida Cure Cookbook. Her book is called The Candida Cure, and her new book is... Uh, is called the Candida Cure Cookbook. She also has a book called Healing Multiple Sclerosis. She's been on television, on radio, and uh, she's got a wealth of information about healing, uh, healing both MS and Candida from a practitioner standpoint as well as from a personal standpoint. She actually healed herself of MS, and she's been symptom-free for over 20 years. If you're dealing with an autoimmune health issue, multiple sclerosis, if you've been diagnosed with candida, you definitely want to listen in. Second half of the program, we'll get your calls here in our next segment at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, or anything you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, Please head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. We'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team as well. If you want to make some money selling longevity products, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you like the idea of being in business for yourself, having your own, making your own, uh, making your own hours, making your own schedule, not having a boss, enjoying the tax benefits associated, tax write-off benefits associated with having your own business, you want to join the Brightside Ben team. Please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. Of course, you can also sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. If you like what we talk about on this program every day about using nutrition to help heal the body, using common sense health strategies for dealing with health challenges, you're going to love our Truth Skin Health products, which leverage the same ideas that we talk about on this program every day for dealing with the inside of the body. They leverage the same ideas for dealing with the outside of the body, that is using nutrition for the skin. Vitamin C and vitamin A particularly, but you gotta have a high enough dose and you don't want preservatives, fragrances, or fillers, or waxes, or oils, or perfumes or water or propylene glycol or any other fillers or excipients you want to know about our truth skin health products check them all out at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay so we're talking connective tissue specifically as it regards a condition called fibromyalgia disorder that results in hypersensitivity and pain throughout the body people who have to deal with fibromyalgia may experience fatigue it's related to chronic fatigue syndrome in fact many practitioners believe that it is the same illness fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome anxiety depression memory problems sleeplessness these are all uh, likely to occur if you've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. There's lots of things you can do to deal with the pain associated with fibromyalgia, but there's not a lot of things you can do to deal with the condition. 
And even the pain strategies aren't going to help if they don't deal, aren't going to help a lot if they don't deal with the underlying condition. If you go to the doctor, you're going to get a pain pill or an antidepressant. And for the most part, these treatments have been shown to be unsuccessful, particularly when it comes to long-term resolution of fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is a connective tissue disease. Officially, it's not considered to be a connective tissue illness. Some, some practitioners recognize the link, to, uh, link between fibromyalgia and, and connective tissue, but the mainstream doesn't. But from a purely physiologic perspective, that's what we're talking about. It specifically affects a, a component of the, of the connective tissue called the fascia, which we've talked about before. The fascia is a special type of connective tissue that surrounds and protects and provides cushioning for all the structures of the body, for all the muscles, for the bones, for the organs, for the glands, for the blood vessels, even the cells themselves. The cells themselves have a, uh, uh, are protected by the fascia. The fascia coat all the cells of the body. All 100 trillion of the cells of the body are not just coated by the fascia, they're actually sustained and nourished by the fascia. Over time, as the effects of nutritional deficiency kick in and as poor posture kicks in and as emotional traumas kick in, make no mistake about it, there's a relationship between mental and emotional traumas and the fascia. As, as we age and as all of these things conspire to break down the body, the fascia can become chronically damaged, chronically wounded. And then you end up with this response, this fascial response, which is a kind of sticky quality, a sticky adhesive quality that causes something that are called adhesions. Adhesions are a, response to, are a response of the fascia to chronic nutritional deficiency as well as chronic traumas, be they physical traumas or emotional traumas or mental traumas. The net result is an adherence or a stickiness, which is technically called an adhesion. This is also, this can also result from surgeries, as we've said. And this is kind of a one of the one of the hidden problems with surgical procedures that no surgeons ever tell us about. Oh, we'll just take your gallbladder out. You don't need that silly little organ. Well, they don't tell you that to cut the ab, to to take the gallbladder out. They got to cut the abdomen, and the net result is 90% or more of the time an abdominal adhesion, which can result in all kinds of pain, including fibromyalgia. So fascial adhesion, stickiness, which represent a protective response to, heal, uh, to damage or trauma, be it physical trauma or emotional trauma, can result in pain and can result in what we call fibromyalgia. The body is supposed to flow. The body has a flowing nature. The blood flows, the fluid flows, even the connective tissue and the fascia, which we don't think of as being, as being dynamic, we tend to think of it as being static. Even the fascia has to flow. The fascia is liquid. It's a liquid solid. They call it a liquid crystal. It's a flowing solid. It's like razzles. When I was a kid, there used to be a candy called, it probably still is, a candy called razzles. They said, first it's a candy, then it's a gum. Little round razzles are so much fun. It's a 60s commercial. Razzles were a, a candy that converted into a gum. Whenever I think of the fascia, I think of razzles. It's a solid like a candy, and then it gets converted into a liquid or a flowing substance like a gum. It's a liquid crystal, liquid solid. That's an amazing idea. It's a liquid solid, and this liquid crystal, like all liquid crystals, even the liquid crystals in your television, your LCDs, LCD stands for liquid crystal display, even your LCD television utilizes the really interesting properties that liquid solids have, liquid crystals have. Liquid solids, i.e. liquid crystals, store energy in an organized fashion. They take random energy, random, just chaotic energy, and they lock it in place. They store it, and they put it into a form. You might say that this energy is in a form, i.e. in formation. This is what information is. Information is chaos that has been structured. And the job of the fascia is to take chaotic energy that's linked to movement, random movements or conscious movements, and structure it into a form. It takes random, chaotic energy and makes it into information. Liquid crystals, whether they're in your television or in your body, are information storage devices. That makes the entire body an information storage system, just like a computer. That's pretty amazing. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will be back with your phone calls right after this. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open. We'll be right back. All right, we're back on the break.
right side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a minute. Got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Anne Baroque, who has written several books. Her recent book is called The Candida Cure Cookbook. She's also got a book about curing candida, also about curing multiple sclerosis, and she's got some expertise, personal expertise. She's not only a naturopath and a nutritionist, Anne Baroque, healed herself of multiple sclerosis, and she has now been symptom-free symptom free for over 20 years. Her story highlights something we talk about on this program all the time, and that's this. All chronic long-term degenerative disease is reversible. Nobody is condemned to a chronic long-term uh, uh, degenerative disease, whether we're talking autoimmune disease or whether we're talking heart disease or, God forbid, if we're talking cancer, it's in the body's nature to heal. And Baroque's story exemplifies what we talk about here on the Bright Side all the time. Folks, if you are dealing with a chronic long-term health challenge, do not let a boneheaded medical professional condemn you. You are not condemned. All health challenges are reversible. They may take a little longer or may take a little, short, or a little shorter, depending on how degenerated you are. But the Bright Side philosophy, and that's why I call this, side, this program the Bright Side, and that's why I call my philosophy the Bright Side philosophy, is the body has a power to heal. Don't let a medical professional tell you anything different. Don't let them tell you you will be on a prescription drug the rest of your life. Do not let them tell you they have to cut you open or surgically remove organs. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't buy the lie. The medical profession, the medical model is run by dishonesty. And I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the paradigm, the model. It is dishonest. It's unfair. And don't fall for it. Amber Oak's story exemplifies this idea. She healed herself of multiple sclerosis using nothing more than nutrition and nutritional strategies. She's going to be talking about that at the bottom of the hour. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will continue talking fibromyalgia and what you can do about it on our next program. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Wes in Idaho. Good morning, Wesley. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you, Ben? Uh, I'm, I'm good. Nice to talk to you. What's going on, buddy? Extreme ketogenic diet, my call. Do you know of a PhD, Harvard PhD, named Viljamer Stephenson? He's on a twenty. Oh yes, Viljamer. He's he's not around anymore. He's he he's one of the very early practitioners. I I told his story a few months ago. Uh, go. What did you want to ask about him? Well, he's on wikipedia web page and i want to relate it to everybody out there he went up to uh the arctic he is known as the arctic explorer and he ate with the eskimos just meat and he came yep. back and they thought he was going to be sick on uh scurvy and plugged arteries because of all the uh uh, saturated fat, and they found him perfectly healthy. But Even, what I wanted to ask you, here's the question on yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah. Once again, Stafford, uh, Stemitz has discovered he felt better and yeah. was healthier on a, a diet that restricted carbohydrates. The, there was two men in this study in New York City. They put him on for one year just meat, and then they found that the only thing abnormal is what they say. Their bowels uh, and their stools were smaller and did not smell. So, so, Ben, is it normal for your stools to smell and abnormal if <laughs> no. they don't according to this Wikipedia? No, they should not fact, smell your stools. You're, let me just cut to the chase here. And by the way, the story is very fascinating. Uh, Wilhelmar Stephenson, uh, he, he was, as you say, Wes, he was an Arctic explorer. And they thought he was lying when he came back to the States. Yeah. They thought he was lying. So what they did is they tested him at Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital. Right. They, they tested him there, and they watched everything he ate for a year because they thought he was lying. And yeah. not, only, not only Wes, not only were, was he fine and perfectly healthy after a year of just eating meat, no vegetables, no very little carbs, mostly that's, just meat, and not only point. that, he lost weight and his blood pressure dropped and that was after a year of just eating meat it's a really brilliant story i told i talked about it a few months ago i uh, know answer your question your stool should not smell what, what else did you want to say wes well another thing i want to point out you know weston price also found the same thing these people on this diet had no tooth decay had no right. need for braces their teeth 
grew in straight, no diabetes, no heart disease. Yep. I believe we've got to take a look at what these people were doing. Yep, you're 100% correct. Hey, Wes, I'm going to take another phone call here. Thank you so much for contributing. I appreciate Thank it. Have a, have a beautiful day, buddy. Good to talk to you. All right, Larry in Tennessee, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, hello, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing today, Larry? How can we help? Oh, not too, not too bad. I've uh, I've written down three issues here. I don't know if we can get to all three, but uh, all right, let's uh, do the most important one first. Okay, I've, I've been experiencing uh, declining vision over the past uh, twelve to fifteen years. Okay, how old are you, Larry? I'm only sixty-three. Okay, well, it's not unusual. The vision depends on the muscles and over time, um, eye muscles. Um, as we're looking for, as we're looking near, and as we're looking far, the muscles adjust. And typically, as we get older, all the muscles of the body start to break down. So you basically want to regard that as a degenerative condition. And I'll tell you how you address that in a moment. Just real quickly, what are your other two concerns? They may be related. Real quickly, because uh, I, I only have a couple I minutes. Have some, thin, I have some thin, deteriorating disc. Okay, same idea, same idea. What's the third thing? Uh, I've had several bad sinus infections in the past three years. Okay, they're all very possibly related. The body is just deteriorating and degenerating, and this deterioration and degeneration typically follows inflammation and immune activation, which is where your sinuses come in. So you're basically looking at the same kind of thing, wrong stuff getting in, right stuff not getting in. And it pretty much sums up all chronic long-term degenerative health challenges. The bad stuff's getting in and the good stuff isn't. The bad stuff, think food toxins. Unless you're out there in the back alley shooting up crack or, or speed, which I doubt you are, the chances are the bad, stif- the bad stuff is getting in through food. The only way to know this is by your responses to those foods. Now, you can go by digestive responses, that is gas, bloating, heartburn, diarrhea, loose stools, constipation. Those typically will take a little bit longer to show up than sinus problems. See, sinus problems, mucus and congestion, those will show up much more quickly when you put something in the system that shouldn't be there. So your sinus congestion, your sinus problems are actually a window to what's happening in the body, a window to the immune or inflammatory response that's occurring inside the body. Again, probably secondary to food. So do a food, uh, start off with a fast, a swear OV cleanse or a complete fast. You can get Swear OV at, by calling 866-735-2470, and that's spelled S-U-E-R-O, Swear O, V, V-I-E. It's a fermented drink from, uh, that Jordan Rubin formulated that'll give you energy while you're doing your fast. It provides you not just with, not only with probiotics, but also with protein, as well as potassium and cal- and magnesium. I think there's also a little calcium in there, too. And it'll give you energy. Okay, what, you know, what, what, what's the name of it again? It's called Swear OV. S-U-E-R-O V-I-E call 866-735-2470 and tell them you want uh, probably a 12 pack of Swear-O-V they're real cheap they're about 3 or 4 bucks a bottle and you do half a bottle every hour for 1 or 2 days when you start eating again eat one kind of food and assess uh, assess your symptomology that's called the elimination diet uh, and that'll, that'll that will uh, figure out what kind of foods are causing problems and that will reduce any inflammatory or immune uh, issues that are associated with DJ generation then you got to build up the body and there's lots of ways of doing that except we're out of time and i got to take a break later if you call back on monday our next program I'll, we can finish this up got ann baroque coming up in, uh, in our next segment thanks larry appreciate it i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side we'll be back right after this On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase longevity products off all our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel off of truthtreatments.com. Also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, perfume, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon, oil, water, wax, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, as you guys know, we talk about on this program, on the Bright Side, nutritional strategies for dealing with health challenges. 
As a pharmacist, I can tell you there are no prescription drugs that are going to reverse your chronic degenerative disease, but that doesn't matter because we don't need prescription drugs. We don't need the medical model. We don't need surgeries. We don't need anything that's offered by big pharma. Nothing can help us anyway. And that's why I'm so excited to have our next guest on, Ann Baroque. She's a naturopath as well as a nutritionist, a CNC. She's got several books out on candida and multiple sclerosis. And not only is she a healer and a therapist, she's actually healed herself of multiple sclerosis. And she's got a great story to tell. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Dr. Ann Baroque. Baroque. Did I say that right, Ann? You did. It's Baroque. Thank you so much Baroque. for having me on. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, I'm very excited to talk to you about Candida, but first I want you to tell the folks about your personal story, how you dealt with multiple sclerosis and how you got into this whole healing business yourself. Absolutely. It really was, um, it was through my journey that I do the work that I do now. And I just want to set it up a little bit. I was kind of the poster uh, child for autoimmune condition. I was a sugar addict since I was a child. I was type A. I had a lot of stress. And I had had probably more than 60, 80 antibiotics by the time I was uh, a late teenager. And I had rotted every tooth out from eating so much sugar with silver amalgam fillings in my mouth. And so at 18, I had Epstein-Barr. And I was had the monovirus, and it was like bed rest, but I didn't get better. And I'd seen eight different specialists. I was on more than 20 different medications, mainly antibiotics cool. and steroids, and I wasn't getting wow. well. Well, hang and on, Ann. They, Ann, Dr. Brooke, 20 different medications at the age of, in your 20s? Oh, yeah. It All was, at the I was same about time? 19 at that point, and they were just trying to figure out why I wasn't recovering. And so, you know, it was just antibiotics, steroids, antibiotic steroids, and, you know, I just was really felt like I was dying. And at this wow. point, I didn't have MS, but I came across Dr. William Crook's book, The Yeast Connection, that had come right. out, and he was really the second doctor to popularize this condition. And I followed a protocol to get rid of yeast overgrowth. I got better. It took me a year, and then I went about my crazy ways. I didn't know that yeast can come back even more virulently. And so at 24, I was sitting in a restaurant, and to you it would look like a conscious epileptic attack, and I was uh, spasming uncontrollably, couldn't breathe, swallow, or move. And within two weeks after testing, the doctor says, well, the great news is you don't have cancer. The bad news is you have multiple sclerosis, and oh, we have chemotherapy and get ready for a wheelchair. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was going to put you on chemo, like drug, like a cancer that's, medication. That's all they had at that time. And I looked at my mother and I said, you know, if I take this chemo, I'm going to die. I said, I, I don't want to be guinea pig again. I said, if I'm going to not make it, I want to figure it out on my own way. And it was tough. I'm an only child. And my mother agreed. And, you know, I didn't know what I know now. And so we left that office. And my journey was intense. It was four years, uh, very tumultuous. I had those immune response attacks daily, probably for the first six to eight months. I was basically bedridden. I could get to the bathroom and back to the couch, but I had difficulty breathing, swallowing, moving, numbness, tingling, blurry vision. And I found what little information was out there, I put together my own protocol, and it consisted of getting back um, on an antifungal diet, anti-candida, taking an antifungal, working with emotional mental layers. I had the 16 silver fillings removed, and I also uh, took minimal supplementation. I didn't really know what I know now, and it was really then challenging my beliefs. You know, I really believed at 24 this was not going to be my exit point, and I certainly wasn't going to stay in a body like that. So I will say it was not a smooth ride. I survived a suicide attempt and a near-death experience. Oh, so wow. it kind of cracked open physiologically and psychologically, but it was really in hindsight, it was a shamanic journey. It was really, not only did I realize how amazing the body is and the innate intelligence, if you clean up that environment to remove inflammation long enough, but also that, you know, how powerful we are. And with time and tenacity, uh, you know, I was able to see it through and then it also opened the door to what I was really to do in life, which was to be a healer. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. Now, you were at the age of 19 when you went through all this stuff. You're just a regular kid. Were you in college? Were you studying anything? Or? I was. I was, you know, leaving high school, getting into college. And I, I just remember, like, oddly enough, it was the unit that it was the time I had the most units in college. And I actually made the dean's list. Don't even, I don't even know because I would sleep in my car in between, you know, classes because I was exhausted all the time. But And you yeah, weren't studying health. You had nothing to do, nothing you were doing was about health or biology or chemistry or anything like that? 
No, I was actually studying uh, business and radio, television, film at that time. So oh, interesting. I got one of those degrees too. <laughs> Useless degrees. So uh, anyway, um, so you uh, you healed yourself of, the, of MS, and then you dedicated yourself to helping other folks. Well, how did that? How, tell, how did you segue well, into being a healthcare professional? That you know, I was in the record business at that time, and I thought, you know, I'm and I love music and film, but this is not my passion. And I so I literally took an Adobe site unseen, and I moved to Taos, New Mexico, and I. Lived Literally just worked for minimum wage and lived, went from city to L.A. to Little House on the Prairie. And it was really just solidifying and healing uh, time for me that I had really put MS to bed. Because after four years of dealing with something so intense, you know, you still look over your shoulder, after, you know, in the beginning. And I just really healed there. I think the, the land, the oxygen... Uh, making it very simple. There wasn't all the stress. And then I thought, what am I going to do? And I thought, let me write my story. I said, you know, I can't just sit on this information. Mm. I want to share it. And so I moved to Seattle and I didn't like the weather there. I lasted six months and went back to LA and then started my schooling. And I opened a practice uh, 19 years ago and I, you know, work, I've seen thousands of clients and written a couple books. And I just really you know, I have a great, I'm very intuitive, so I have a great understanding of tuning into people spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And I think when you're dealing with a chronic condition, those are the layers that you need to examine or at least point out. Love because it. it's not just about popping a, a supplement and eating That's the right, right diet. It really is a combination of factors. And That's awesome. You know? Well said. You, we talk about that every day. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, in that order. So I take, I take it that there is a relationship between, at least in your experience, a relationship between candida and multiple sclerosis, correct? I do. I think that fungal overgrowth and the mycotoxins are the root cause to all autoimmune disease and most conditions that I work with. Even with cancer, I don't think it's the root, but I think that that throws off the immune system, which allows cancer viruses to thrive. So I think one of the silent epidemics we're not dealing with is the microbiome, which is the fungal biota of the body. Okay, the microbiome for the listener, not the microbiome, but the myco, M-Y-C-O biome, which is a term I just, you, you've introduced me to and I love it. So we actually have a microbiome. We actually have a universe of fungus in the same way that we have a universe of, of, pro, of bacteria in our gut, is correct? We do, and it starts out as a single-celled yeast form, and male, female, child, because guys go, oh, God, that's a female thing. And I said, no, I said it connects to your sinus infections, your psoriasis, your prostate issues. And, so there, you know, and so it stays in a balanced world in the gut until you upset it, and things that we, will throw Dr. it Dr. Brock, we got to take it. We got to take a break. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Sure, sure. Uh, but but there's, good, there's good fungus, like there's good bacteria, correct? Correct. Well, you want it. It has its place. We just don't want an overgrowth state. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and come back with Dr. Ann Baroque talking about yeast as well as multiple sclerosis. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're talking to Dr. Ann Baroque, Baroque about uh, candida and multiple sclerosis. Dr. Baroque, before I forget, uh, before we run out of time, give folks the, your website and how they can get a hold of you if they need to contact you. Do you see patients? I do. I see clients via Skype and in office. I'm in New York right now, but I'll be actually moving back to Los Angeles within about a month. <laughs> okay. So I'll be back there, and it's annbaroque.com, A-N-N-B-O-R-O-C-H.com. Okay, annbaroque.com. And uh, do you have an office? Do people see you in your office, or how does that work? I Excuse do. Me. So, like I said, I'll do Skype with people around the world if they can't come see me. And in Manhattan right now, I have an office that I see people, and then I will have an office back in Los Angeles when okay, I go. Okay, good deal. All right, so before we went to uh, our break, we were talking about the mycobiome, this idea of good fungus, because we all know about good bacteria, but you never hear about good fungus. What are those, some of the roles of the good fungus? Well, it's not really a role that it plays. It's that it keeps the ecology balanced. It's more like uh, neutral. I wouldn't say that it's positive. You just don't want it in a pathogenic state, which means an overgrowth. So we have this ecology. The microbiome is filled with bacteria and viruses and parasites and, you know, not parasites, but fungi. And you want to have that balance. And so the problem is, is that you want, you know, in the gut, you want 85% good bacteria, 15% not so good. And so that yeast stays as a single-celled organism until it starts to multiply and turn into a mycelial fungal form. So, and only one dose of antibiotics can throw you off. So you how, about be, 
How about chlorinated water and fluoride and preservatives sure. and foods? Sure, absolutely. Of that? Chlorinated water, you know, we've got, you know, things like birth control pills, hormone replacement. Uh, all those things are going to make an impact where you're wiping out the good bacteria and then the yeast multiplying. People go, oh, that was 25 years ago if I took an antibiotic when I was seven. Uh, I said, but what do you love to eat? Everything that turns into sugar rapidly will feed this yeast through a lifetime. So pastries, cookies, alcohol is liquid sugar. Potatoes. Uh, cheeses, yeah, Pota- what'd you say? Potatoes, corn. Potatoes, yeah, everything. And then, you know, then you might go through another course of antibiotics, then you have a high period of stress where you're elevating cortisol and blood sugar. And over time, when this fungus uh, starts to take over, it will, you know, poke holes in, in essence and create leaky gut. And then the damage really isn't the yeast and fungus, it's the waste products. Those mycotoxins mm. then start to destroy cells, tissues, disrupt the communication of the immune system. So whatever you're most vulnerable, you know, just as the gut gets leaky, so can the brain. So this is where we're seeing things like MS and Alzheimer and mental illness and brain fog. I think there's a relationship and fungus doesn't get enough attention. I think the science is coming about, but it's not quite there yet. Okay, now Dr. Crook talks a lot about just going zero carbs, like no carbohydrates, no sugar. You you have a book, new book. I I don't know if it's out yet, called the Candida Cure Cookbook. I assume it's out. Is that right? The Candida yeah, Cure. Is. Uh-huh. Okay. How does how is your approach different from Dr. Crook's? Or We're is not it? really different. I mean, Dr. Crook was um, open to some grains way back when. It just wasn't really wheat, and, and I've taken it to the gluten level. I know we're on this kick where it's, you know, all paleo and there's no grains at all. I, I'm more middle ground. I think that some bodies can definitely do well and still uh, get rid of yeast with doing some quinoa, buckwheat, very small amounts of brown rice, amaranth. You know, I, I'm not – I because the thing is you need compliance, and my goal is to give you as much as you can have and enjoy and still get the results. So unless maybe I have a really chronic case that isn't seeing results, then I might pull grains for a month or two, but I'm always back to balance. So I think as long as you're staying off corn and uh, the gluten, then you're fine. Is corn a real bad guy? I don't like it because it converts into sugar. It's mainly GMO. It's what we shove to, you know, give all the livestock. And, you know, we've our bodies are sensitive because we've had so much high fructose corn syrup. Mm. So it's really not my favorite. I love it. And I tell people in the long run, when you start to, once you're done with the program, such as mine, you know, do small amounts and try to at least make it organic. Are there any supplements you could take that would mitigate the damage associated or the, the damage caused by some of these grains, like corn in particular? Can Do you recommend enzymes or probiotics? or anything that can kind of soften the blow a little bit? Sure. I mean, if you're going, if, on my program, I obviously am going to recommend an anti herbal antifungals, but when you're not doing it, yes, always have digestive enzymes because what, those are the times to use them when you eat poorly, when you're stressed out, when you travel. Uh, those are the times to help digestion better. And then, you know, also I think everybody's gut needs to be protected. So if you're not living on an herbal antimicrobial, you do need to be living on probiotics because because even if you've cleaned out and you think you have a relatively good diet, you're still being exposed every day to environmental toxins. There's times you're going to have stress. So I think it's just, it's protection. You know, 70, 80% of our immune systems in our GI tract. So mm-hmm. it's something you really want to take note of and, you know, uh, protect also because, you know, what's changed mostly is that it's the environmental load. You know, it wasn't just Mm. dealing with candida we've had because of just diet, but it's that the soils are depleted and also the, um, you know, all the GMOs and what they're doing as far as the chemicals to our intestinal lining. And then when you add that with the gluten, it just, it's so easy to see why we have so much leaky gut and dysbiosis, which is an imbalance to good and bad bacteria. How about serotonin? Where does that fit into this whole equation? Well, your gut makes about, what, 90% of it there, so it's critical. And, you know, that's the one thing I've noticed over the last decade is how many people are coming in with anxiety and depression on top of what's ever going on with them physiologically. And so, so much the place to start is the GI tract. And I even tell people with cravings. I said, let's do my 90-day program. Let's clean you out. And usually what you're going to find is when you balance blood sugar and you get rid of uh, yeast overgrowth. And, And when we're doing that, we're also addressing bacteria and parasites. So when you get that ecology balanced, usually, you know, all your chemical cravings are gone and what's left is psychological and it's much easier to tackle. What is your 90-day program? It's basic. 
basically putting people through an anti-candida diet, so they're staying off alcohol, sugar, dairy, gluten, corn, fermented foods in the beginning, just because it can cause a little bit of a histamine response, and then using herbal antifungals. And then I also found we really need to support the detox pathway. So the first month I'm supporting the gallbladder, second month liver. First month I'm also putting in a product that will support blood sugar and adrenal function and digestion. Second month a little bit more on the adrenals. And then I work with things like red clover tea to clean out the blood, liver, kidneys. And I'll do some baseline like vitamin C and E. Uh, and then you know, I add a little more supplements as the second month goes on, like fish oils and some superfood green foods. So it's really what I found is that if I put it all together and really work with cleaning up the gut, my col- the, uh, the gut ecology and then supporting your elimination pathways and building the endocrine system from the adrenals and the blood sugar, Within 90 days, pretty much everybody feels amazing. It might take longer, obviously, for chronic conditions. Now, if somebody wants to participate in the 90-day program, is that something they can get out of the book, or should they call you or contact you somehow? I wrote it so that no one ever had to see me. It's all in the book, The Candida Cure. There's one chapter in there in the Candida Cure cookbook, and the healing MS is great for anybody with autoimmune disease, and it's laid out in there, too. So the the 90-day program is in the Candida Cure? Correct. Okay, and is it on Kindle? It is. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to get it this morning. I'll I'll buy it right away. So uh, uh, I love what you said about the gallbladder because that's a very underappreciated structure, in my opinion. Real quickly, what's the relationship between the gallbladder, gallstones, bile, and candida? Well, I feel what happens over time from just poor diet and medications that the bile, it becomes more thick and it becomes sludgy and then obviously with time when it's not filtering because the, the role of the bile is to create peristaltic actions so that you have bowel movements which so many people are constipated to break down fats and also to help uh, dump the poisons from the liver and so when it's congested then your digestion's off you might get GERD issues you're creating an environment for candida you're also recirculating toxins that make you feel brain fog and tired so I feel that it's essential because so many people will go into a hardcore let's say antimicrobial and then they want to clean up the gut but you're not supporting the pathway to get things out so Mm. i love to use something that has you know milk thistle dandelion taurine ingredients like that and i use a line of supplements plus i'll also recommend ones out there that are easily available and decongest it and when you do that it's you know it makes it so much easier and the same thing with dealing with you know the kidneys you you work with that and you must have a bit doubt uh, uh, daily bowel movement. That's something we don't like to talk about, but I don't even work with starting to detox unless someone's moving once a day. What do you do for somebody who's chronically constipated just to get them symptomatically to have a bowel movement? Real, real quickly, because we're running out of time here. I will oh. pretty much use an aloe product. So aloe ferox, I use, uh, there's aloe light or aloe 225 by BioDesign out there. Okay. And I'll put in some flaxseed and obviously change the diet. Maybe put some probiotics because you have to get going each day. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Brock. Her book is uh, The Candida Cure and also The Candida Cure Cookbook. Love it. And uh, if you want to check out her website, it's amberoke.com, A-N-N-B-R-O-B-O-R-O-C-H.com. Thank you so much for being on the air. Appreciate it so Thank much. Thank you so much. Good, good luck care. with everything. Hope we talk again soon. That was Amber Oak, and her book is The Candida Cure Cookbook in addition to The Candida, candida Cure and Baroque.com, A-N-N-B-O-R-O-C-H. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.